Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn Chemistry Live. Today I am back with the second part of the chapter Combustion and Flame. So let's get into our chapter. Today we are going to start with the topic Flame. You all know what a flame is, right? What is flame? Flame is the visible, glowing, gaseous part of a fire. When you light a matchstick, what you see as a glow is known as flame. Okay, so the flame is the visible, glowing, gaseous part of a fire. On the basis of forming flame, you can divide fuels into two. The fuels which forms flame and the fuels which does not form flame. Those fuels which can form vapors on burning can form flame during combustion. For example, kerosene, camphor, candle wax, LPG. All these can form flame during combustion. Okay. And the fuels which do not vaporize on burning produces no flames at all. For example, wood, charcoal, etc. These fuels does not produce any kind of flame during their combustion. Okay. Now, let's move on to different parts of flame. Here you can see a candle which is lighted. Now, let's see the parts of flame one by one. The first part is outer zone. Outer zone is the outermost part of a flame. It is formed due, due to the complete combustion of the fuel. Okay, so the outermost zone is formed due to the complete combustion of fuel and it will be blue in color. Here in this picture it is not clear but in actual case it will be blue in color and it is the hottest part of the flame. Okay, the second part of a flame is known as middle sun. The middle part of a flame is known as middle sun and it is formed due to the partial combustion of the fuel. The incomplete combustion of the fuel forms the middle sun of the flame. It will be yellow in color and it will be moderately hot part of the flame. Now, the third part of the flame is known as inner sun. Inner sun is formed due to the unburnt vapors of the fuel and it will be black colored. It is the least hot part of the flame. Okay, so for a flame there will be three major parts. One is outermost sun and it is formed due to the complete combustion of the fuel. It will be blue in color. Then the second part is the middle sun of the flame. It is formed due to the partial combustion of the flame and it is yellow in color. It will be moderately hot. And the third part is the inner sun. It is, the, it is formed due to the unburnt vapors of fuel and it will be black in color. It is the least hot part of a flame. Okay. Now let's learn more about fuel. What is a fuel? A fuel is any material which is burnt to produce heat or power. So any material when it is burnt, we can produce heat or power. It is known as a fuel. Okay. The fuel can be in solid, liquid or gaseous state. A fuel can exist in a solid, liquid or gaseous state. Okay. Let's see them one by one. Solid fuel. The fuels which can exist in solid state at room temperature are known as Solid fuel, example, wood, charcoal, cork, camphor. These are the solid fuels. Now let's see liquid fuel. What is liquid fuel? The fuels which exist in liquid state at room temperature are known as liquid fuel. At room temperature, they exist in liquid state. Okay, example, petrol, diesel, kerosene. Okay, now Gaseous fuel. The fuels which exist in gaseous state at room temperature are known as gaseous fuel. For example, LPG, CNG, biogas. All these are gaseous fuels. Okay. So the fuel can be any material which can produce heat or power during combustion. And the fuel can be uh, classified into three on the basis of the uh, state of matter in which it exists. It can be three. Solid fuel, liquid fuel and gaseous fuel. Okay. What is an ideal fuel? There are certain characteristics for an ideal fuel. Let's see them one by one. First it, it is, should be cheap. An ideal fuel should be cheap. It should be less expensive. The second characteristic is that it should have low ignition temperature. That is, it should catch fire at a low temperature. 
and the third point is that it should be readily available or it should be easily available fuel the fourth point is that it should burn easily at a moderate rate in air that is it should catch fire easily and it should burn at a moderate rate in the air and the fifth point is that it should produce large amount of heat or large amount of energy it should produce okay and the sixth point is that no undesirable substances should be left behind after the combustion that is no unwanted substances should be produced as the uh, combustion happens so these are the six points to be satisfied by a fuel to be termed as ideal fuel okay any fuel which obeys these six points can be termed as an ideal fuel now let's see the term fuel efficiency what is meant by efficiency of a fuel the efficiency of your fuel is expressed in terms of calories the amount of heat energy produced by the complete combustion of 1 kg of fuel is known as its calorific value so the efficiency of a fuel is expressed in terms of calories and what is the calorific value of a fuel if you take 1 kilogram of fuel and is burnt completely, how much amount of energy you get? That is known as its calorific value. Okay. So, the unit of calorific value is expressed in kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. Per kilogram, how much, how much kilojoules of energy you get? That is the calorific value of a fuel. Higher the calorific value of a fuel, higher will be its efficiency. Okay. So, as the calorific value increases, it will be an efficient fuel. Now let's see the calorific value of some common fuels and compare their efficiencies. This is the exact table that is given in your NCRT text. Here you can see the calorific value of different fuels, right? Here you can see the first fuel is cow dung cake. What is its calorific value? It is 6000 to 8000 kilojoule per kilogram. So that 6000 to 8000 uh, 8, kilojoules of energy we get per kilogram of cow dung cake when it is completely burnt. Okay. So coming downwards, you can see the calorific value of different fuels gets increased, right? Here, uh, it's, I think it's not visible, but for hydrogen, it will be 1,50,000 kilojoules of energy we get when it is uh, 1 kilogram of hydrogen is burnt. Okay, so hydrogen is the most efficient fuel in this list. So, so for which fuel the calorific value is the highest, it will be the most efficient fuel. So, this is all about the efficiency of fuel. Now, let's move on to the other side of combustion we have discussed what combustion is what are the different types of combustion what are the advantages of combustion now let's see the other phase of combustion how combustion turns harmful we are going to discuss different harmful effects of combustion let's see them one by one the first consequence is that incomplete combustion of carbon fuels like wood coal, petroleum, etc. release fine particles of unburned carbon dust to the atmosphere. Okay. Incomplete combustion means partial combustion. Combustion in the limited amount of air. Okay. So, in such cases, when carbon fuels are not completely burnt, it will produce unburnt carbon. The unburnt carbon dust will be released to the atmosphere. So, when you uh, come uh, to breathe this, it will cause respiratory diseases like asthma. Okay. Once again, that is the incomplete combustion of the carbon fuels like wood, coal, petroleum, etc. will release the dust particles of unburnt carbon to the atmosphere when you come to uh, breathe them it will cause various respiratory diseases like asthma now let's see the second effect caused by the combustion again the incomplete combustion of carbon fuels release carbon monoxide incomplete combustion means the combustion in a limited amount of oxygen it will cause carbon monoxide gas it will produce carbon monoxide gas carbon monoxide gas it is highly toxic gas so here you can see the various uh, various harmful effects of 
uh, effects caused by the carbon monoxide gas what are they headache then nausea breathlessness collapse dizziness then loss of consciousness all these are the different signs of carbon monoxide exposure also if you are exposed to carbon monoxide for a long time it it can also cause cause death so when you burn something you should ensure that proper amount of air is available for the combustion to happen otherwise it will cause uh, the formation of carbon monoxide and it can cause various health issues okay now let's see the third harmful effect of the combustion we know that most of the fuels release carbon dioxide gas on combustion so carbon dioxide gas it is the common gas that is emitted during combustion now let's see what are the harmful effects of this carbon dioxide gas increased levels of carbon dioxide gas in atmosphere causes global warming so when you uh, when you do a lot of combustion it will cause the increase in carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere it will cause global warming what is global warming it is nothing but global warming is the rise in temperature of the earth's atmosphere and what happens when the temperature uh, earth's atmospheric temperature increases it will cause the melting of polar ice which again leads to the rise in the sea levels okay so it is a very problematic condition to be addressed okay so the increased level of carbon dioxide causes global warming here you can see the melting of polar ice moving on to the next slide the combustion of coal and diesel releases sulfur dioxide gas sulfur dioxide is so2 gas okay so what are the consequences of the release of sulfur dioxide gas to the atmosphere sulfur dioxide gas is highly suffocating and corrosive what do you mean by suffocating we cause very much difficulty for breathing so it increases the difficulty for breathing uh, the sulfur dioxide gas and it is also corrosive in nature it corrodes many of the materials the second consequence is that the oxides of sulfur and nitrogen which is released into the atmosphere due to the burning of coal and diesel will dissolve in the rain water and that causes the acid rain okay so when automobile uh, automobiles are um, in automobiles when the fuels are burned it will release sulfur and nitrogen oxides and when they reaches the atmosphere and when the rain comes it will dissolve in the rain water and causes the rain acidic okay and the acid rain is very much harmful to crops buildings and soil it will increase the acidity of soil it will corrode the buildings and it is also harmful to variety of crops then another important consequence caused by acid rain is that it damages taj mahal by causing the corrosion of marble in the picture it's clearly indicated you can see that the white colored marble is turned yellowish in color due to the acid rain okay this is due to the emission of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides due to the combustion of various fuels okay now we have discussed all the topics that is under the chapter combustion and flame hope you all have understood if you have any doubts you can use the comment box below thank you